uh, I cannot remember. It's the tempo. Probably to produce some more work. Uh, not our focus. Hey, you can start recording now. Yes. Yeah. Oh no! That was it. Okay. Um, Ying Yuan asks, don't know if it's the answer. Why is there more beta cells than alpha cells in islands? Where do you see this from? The, the video, is it? Oh. I mean, if you go to the why of it, why are there more beta than alpha, then it's likely because we need it more to produce insulin. Then the next question should be, why do we why is insulin more important than having more uh, alpha cells to produce insulin? Right? Perhaps that is the next question. Then I think it goes down the lines of is it more dangerous to have more glucose in your body or very little glucose in your body? Maybe that's the like After uh, that day when Zoe asked that question, when why we don't quite see a lot of people with glucagon related issues, then my response is that usually if we don't see it up here, means these people maybe they survive to tell the tale. Uh, based on what Zoe searched, it would seem to be the case that it is quite deadly if you are uh, if you do not have glucagon versus you do not have uh, Kaisin asks, are insulin and glucagon levels supposed to be inversely proportional? That's interesting. I see why you ask that question. First, you skip ahead and do some questions, eh? Okay? okay. Um, you imagine it to be the case. If there is a lot of sugar in your system, you need to produce insulin, right? But that also means that at that point in time, you don't need a lot of glucagon. So I, I think you're right. You're right to say it should be an inversely proportional kind of problem. Because you, it doesn't make sense to have uh, both at the same levels, then you don't get a net effect of glucose going into your cell or out. Like, when you produce more insulin, you cut down on the glucose or glucose production, is it? Like, the more that you already can see the... Oh, the baseline level of glucose, yeah. is it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it cuts down, uh, but I have read that the alpha and beta cells they do inhibit each other in some way. So it's possible that when alpha cells, beta cells are producing insulin, it may be inhibiting the beta cell. When beta cells are producing insulin, it may be inhibiting the alpha cells. I have read somewhere something along this line. Oh, Sarah asks, is there a particular reason? Okay, thanks, Sarah. I, I think a lot of that logic up. Uh, uh, why does insulin increase up take of amino acid? Um, more like when we when insulin is produced, the end state is that we want more glucose to be removed from the blood. Right? Uh, this is one of the one of the ways is that we take in amino acids and we, through chemical reactions, done, glucose will be used in the process. So that table you see, uh, those are all the ways we can adopt in order to reduce the glucose levels in our blood. I like that all our questions are why, why, why. Actually, why questions are the hardest to answer because we can just go too many layers of it. Why are there less alpha cells? Eh? So are there less alpha or beta? Less alpha, is it? Yeah, I think we go along that logic again. Long. Usually if there's less of something in the body, then the logic of it is that we probably don't need it as much as whatever else is present in greater amount of. Whatever you have uh, is biologically tedious to maintain. You don't need it, then don't have so much. So we asked, is there an example of homeostasis where receptor infected control center are the same? Hmm. Not that I can think of. When I'm receptor infected and control center, not that I'm aware of, I see more cases where the control center and receptor are at the same region or could be the same thing in this case. But the infector usually are requires many effects. So they tend to be far away. 
just to restore glucose levels, right? You notice know, there are many factors at play. That inherently means uh, that one hormone can target many cells across the body. And across the body, we have many cells that have insulin receptors. Okay? Can you survive without pancreas? No. Uh, people with uh, pancreatic diseases, pancreatic cancer, usually cannot last very long. Pancreas produce, now we know, not just hormones for the endocrine system, also it has an endocrine system, uh, function, your enzymes digest food. So it's a double whammy when you remove the pancreas. Okay, uh, those are the questions for this round. Now let's return back to the last part of our chapter. You notice that every chapter uh, that deals with a bodily system, goes around this idea of number one, what are the parts that seen in A? Number two, how do the parts work together? We like to end off with what happens if there is a part that's disrupted. Because this is the part that's relevant to you. Heck, I don't mind if you forget everything in biology, but you must remember what happens if your body fails, so that you know uh, how to take care of it. Yes? Circumference, uh. don't know. It could be if I use uh, some, if I, if I use the whatever knowledge you have, right? The cells need to get the hormone into the bloodstream, right? And from what I know, the blood vessels are enveloping the pancreas. Maybe by being at the atrium, it's easier to get into the bloodstream. Maybe. Unless we have blood vessels reaching into the pancreas, then, yeah, then, then my argument will prove otherwise. Okay, so as a case study, we'll be looking at one, uh, what happens when the, what part of the endocrine system fails? More specifically, since so far we've focused our attention on blood glucose regulation, then we'll focus our attention this time around on what happens if a part of this particular regulation fails. There are many other endocrine uh, systems, sorry, there are many other homeostatically controlled systems that require an endocrine system that can fail. For example, things can be messed up and you cannot regulate the temperature, you cannot regulate your blood pressure. There are many other factors that can fail. But we just want to focus on one case study. Okay? And that case study will focus on um, pancreas. We've chosen this case study also because it aligns with our day to day life. In reality, many people suffer from diabetes. Some because of their lifestyle, some because genetically they are more predisposed to get diabetes. I don't know about yourself, whether you know someone close to you who has diabetes. And the effort required to regulate the blood glucose levels and when you have diabetes is a very different story. Because at the end of the day, the endocrine system functions in an involuntary way. You don't think about it, yet it is regulating your body. The moment this fails, you have to start thinking about it. You have to start thinking and when, when uh, your blood sugar levels can be too low, when it's too high, and you manually yourself need to be the one regulating how much hormone is in your body. So, we need to appreciate that these systems are really are keeping us, uh, allowing us to focus on more important things in life. This is an excerpt from one of the National Day rallies, 2017, but still very relevant to today because the numbers are actually rising. Right Nine Singaporeans have died. Five 
refers to a group of conditions characterized by a high level of blood glucose, commonly referred to as blood sugar. Too much sugar in the blood can cause serious, sometimes life-threatening health problems. There are two types of chronic diabetic conditions, type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Pregnant women may acquire a transient form of the disease called gestational diabetes, which usually resolves after the birth of the baby. Pre-diabetes is when the blood sugar level is at the borderline, higher than normal, but lower than in diabetics. Pre-diabetes may or may not progress to diabetes. During food digestion, carbohydrates, or carbs, break down into glucose, which is carried by the bloodstream to various organs of the body. Insulin is a hormone produced by beta cells of the pancreas and is necessary for glucose intake by target cells. In healthy people, beta cells of the pancreas produce insulin. Insulin binds to its receptors on target cells and induce glucose intake.
the, the normal healthy case is insulin to be produced. In type 1 diabetes, it causes an issue with the what cells, beta cells. You will not have insulin produced. To say not is extreme. Uh, as the disease progresses, you will have less and less insulin produced. But that's type 1. Type 2 is a little bit different. It's not that in type 2, there's no issue with this part. Insulin is still produced. By type 2, it is something downstream that is really the problem. We have all these target cells, and on these target cells we have receptors on insulin to bind to, but therein lies the problem. Because if we don't receive the message, we cannot react to the message, even if the message is there. learning about this particular case study. I think it's a very beautiful example of how disrupting any one of these parts can disrupt the entire homeostatic control system. Type 1, not within your control. You have it, you have to manage it. Type 2, however, is the one that's within our control. And it's the one that our dear Prime Minister is growing more green hairs Result of. That's the one we are worried about. And the National Kidney Foundation told me, Singapore, if you just use per capita, uh, ratio-wise, right, we are the we are the country with the largest number of people, proportion-wise, that has diabetes. Largest eh? close my mind, so small. If you look at all the fat, the favorite uh, places Singaporeans like to go to. Hence, we have a lot of sugar inside. You know, sugar at the end of the day is really a, can get addicted to it. It gives you good feelings, hijacks your brain. Every time you take more sugar, more dopamine will be produced. If you do it enough times, your brain will associate sugar with good feelings. And every time you feel sad, you'll pop another bubble tea. So, it's really a problem. You notice know within the, if you go to the supermarket now, that they, now they're trying to drain all the drinks, right? You three grade. See before, recently. Uh, just a few years ago, when we learned about this topic, we were talking about introducing new tree grade into our supermarkets. Now it's here, it's finally here. The new label will be introduced from the end of next year for the most alcoholic free packaged drink suppliers to see how healthy or unhealthy they are. Now, drinks with the highest sugar and Yeah, 
It is that you take in too much sugar without using it. And it's not as fat, it's that you know, affects the receptors. Yes. Is it just like being on a diet also affected? Because if you're on a diet, then you're eating less, right? Then you break down more than fat. Then won't that also affect this? I think, therefore, when people want to go on a diet, right, it needs to be a careful approach done with the help of nutritionists. They can time and sequence what you choose not to eat and what you eat so that you don't end up you know, uh, producing negative effects as a result. Yeah. Okay. So the link is indirect. I myself am not fully clear on the full mechanics of how it damages the receptors, but the more direct link is between the fats and the receptors, not exactly the sugars directly. That means to say, if you are someone that takes in lots of sugars, but you exercise and use all of it, actually the effect won't be, won't be, won't really be that. Yeah. But the reality is, most of us consume more sugars than we actually eat. Really, we do. I can't talk about it. Every morning, in fact, I drink a cup of tea that I don't really need, but it just comforts me. I'm addicted to it. We talked it right, I start the day feeling very uh, unhappy. So I need Tay C. Yeah? Tay C also quite a lot of sugar. You see how much sugar I have to eat? And now I go to Tay C siu tai. Siu tai means I less sugar. It's still sweet. Okay? Another issue, uh, uh, two chapters down the road, if you have too much sugars in your bloodstream, you can damage your kidneys. Okay, this is the real issue. You damage your kidneys, plus your pancreas together, lots of problems will arise. I mean, the only problem is that. My grandpa used to have a sweet food. He got diabetes. Uh, he doesn't drink water at all. He drinks Coca Cola. Every time he needs to hydrate himself, right, he drinks Coca Cola. And then his reason, right, is because that is refreshing. He says it's cold and refreshing. Yeah, like, if I don't put a coke in the fridge, it will not be as refreshing, right? So after that, towards the end, right, um, they, the family substituted it with water in the fridge. Uh, but once in a while, on special occasions, we'll still give him that can of coke. But when he's young, right, he drink like drink water. Like, like, my father said, breathes cigarettes smoke like breathing air. Yeah? So next chapter, respiratory system, you also learn about the effects of smoking. Oh sorry, nervous say respiratory. You see, I want to tell you all the problems that are most people. Let's talk a little bit about how this translates in a graphical uh, format. Supposing you have someone with diabetes. What will this look like if we try to plot the change in sugar levels over time? To a healthy individual, this is what will happen. Your blood sugar levels are constantly fluctuating within a normal range. It fluctuates because at any one point in time, you are using glucose. If you ask you to stand up and go outside class, we use a little bit. Yeah? Or as you wriggle in a chair, you are still using a little bit of glucose. Always fluctuating. You go to the canteen, take a sugary drink, it may, start, it may start to go out of range, but your body will try to restore it. Okay, healthy individual. What about someone with diabetes? Regardless of whether an individual has type 1 or type 2, you will see that the effect is that we cannot respond to the change. Right? So what might you see? Let's say at this point over here is where you take in a sugary drink. Okay, what do you think will happen? And of course, I think you won't see the same fluctuations. Huh? So, what do you think will happen at this point over here? Okay, it will shoot up. Okay, it won't keep going up. Huh? Assuming you stop drinking the sugary drink. Okay, you drink non stop, then it will shoot off. Huh? Okay, but it will come up to here. But what you expect is that you won't be able to come up. Okay? okay, but even as I say this, right, this is not the entire truth either. Because at the end of the day, your body is constantly using a bit of glucose. Right? You keep your heart beating so that you can breathe. So what you might see is that it may return back to normal, but 
take an extremely long amount of time. So when you see something like that, it will set your paper downwards, it will take really, really long for you to reach. Yeah? Do you die from like Yeah, yeah. you can die. Okay. Um, not directly from diabetes, but the other effects of diabetes. Because what the NKF, which you will meet them uh, two chapters, three chapters down the road, okay, their problem is not with the so their problem with diabetes is that it affects the kidneys. And when your kidneys fail, that's when you could die. Because the primary function of the kidney is to remove waste from your body. And if you cannot remove waste from your body, you start to feel the negative effects. And the issue with kidney failure is that you, you think Singapore is uh, a thriving black market where you can just grab kidneys whenever you want. It's not the case. Yeah? Limited supply. Even if you have the supply, your blood types may not match. Um, other than that, when your kidneys fail, you have to be hooked up to the dialysis machine as a substitute kidney. Uh, my uncle got diabetes. Sorry, not diabetes. He got kidney failure. He's lucky that he got a kidney transplant. But after the transplant, also will not last. Because at the end of the day, this is not your kidney. Your body will still react to it as a foreign Invader, it's like a giant bacteria there. Okay? The body is constantly fighting and trying to destroy the foreign kidney. The only reason why it can stay in this body is because it's taking a lot of um, anti immune system medicine so that the medicine does not destroy the kidney. Over time, the kidney will still fail. Uh, he is in that stage now. Uh. There is no way because he already got kidney transplant for him to get a second one. Um, dialysis is not quite helping anymore because. There's only so much a machine can clean your body off. So, take care of yourself. Uh. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Okay, you can't you ask, right? Diabetic patients, that's really one of the hallmarks of uh, tests, right? Is that we test how much sugar is in your urine. Not from your blood, from your urine. Because when you have too much sugar in your bloodstream, other than the fact that it cannot now be put into cells for storage because this system is failing, the excess needs to go somewhere, right? So actually, a lot of the sugars get peed out as waste product by your kidneys. So, if you pee, right? Now, one of the old tales, right, is that you see whether you've got diabetes or not, or a lot of sugar in your pee, right? So after you pee, right, see, and then you blush. And you see if there are a lot of ants that go to the toilet bowl. If you see a lot of ants, right, it could be that there's a lot of sugar in your blood. Uh, other than that, you know in medieval times, how they test whether someone got diabetes? Hey, we didn't have a machine to test how sweet something will be, you know? <laughs> so last time doctor had a very tough job, you know? Medieval times, right, you know, they even had a urine wheel, a chart, where they, they not only indicate the sweetness, but also the colour. I can only imagine, right, a doctor last time, right, it must not be a very a professional lot of people are going to. Can you pee into the cup? Okay, pee already, then we may go. I don't know, I don't know what they're doing last time. Yes. Oh! What does it suddenly be? I would say, uh, it is from whatever inside your urine, right, it is, it is more like beyond what your bloodstream can even hold. Yeah? Whatever you see there is still within your bloodstream needs. Yeah. Okay? So, for today, at the very least, I think let's go away with this. Uh. This is what you can expect of patient diabetes. You will find that you will not quite go back to normal range. It can go, it can dip by the very fact that you require sugars to live. But you take extremely long. Not quite the sharp drop that a healthy person would get. Uh, yes, you got a question? He is, I'm not sure if it's a direct cause, but he is he's very sick also. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it is also about how fast this happens. Yeah. I, 
I think breaking down is one thing. I'm not quite sure also if the building up of the fats also re results in this negative chemical being produced. Uh, lots of papers on it. Yeah. How fat is toxic? Uh? I think too much of it is toxic. I'm not sure why too much of it is toxic. I, I think when there's too much of it, your body is for do something about it. And in doing something about it, they are negative to some things. Yes? I don't know. Now you ask if you take fatty stuff, right? Who this person, right? Okay, before you go off the day, I just want to talk about something. Okay, stop the video. 